Hey everybody, Steve Nixon again with FreeJazzLessons.com. Thank you so much for joining me here today. So as you guys know, I've been working really hard creating all kinds of new lessons and new content for the premium membership version of the site. So I thought it'd be fun today to share with you guys a snippet of what's coming. We're gonna take a look at the classic jazz standard, All the Things You Are. I'm gonna show you guys a bunch of really cool chords you can play on it and all kinds of reharmonization techniques as well. So I think you guys are really gonna enjoy this lesson. All right, enough introduction. Let's get over to the piano and start learning. Thanks. All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna play you the first four bars with the reharms so you hear what we're working toward. And then what I'll do is I'll break down all the chords I'm doing and all the motions. So take a listen to it first. All right guys, so let's break down these chords here. Okay, so the first chord that I'm playing is an F minor seven with a nine and an 11, okay? And the reason why we're calling this note the nine and the 11 as opposed to the two and the four is because we have a seventh in the chord, all right? So let's find these notes here, okay? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine. Okay, so there's that G, which we're just playing down here. Here's the third, and the which is also the tenth, and then the eleventh. Okay, so I have those down here. So now the other thing I did is I did a little chromatic decoration of the melody. Okay, so the melody note is A flat there, and I'm just sort of just kind of chromatically jumping up into it. So. So now what, another interesting thing that I'm doing is play the outer voices first and then the inner voices in the middle. So root of the chord, which is F, third, which is my melody, and then the inner voices here, okay? So this is C here, which is the fifth, and then I have the seventh of the chord, okay, which is E flat. So we have Okay, the melody note again. All right, now this is a total reharm, okay? This is the normal chord there is B flat minor. Okay, but I'm actually using this chord instead. Why? Well, I just think it sounds beautiful. So uh, what's going on here, this is a B flat seven. Okay, so here is the root, the flat seven, okay, the A, so B and A, the third, which is D sharp, okay, then I have F, which is my sharp 11, okay, G sharp, which is my 13, and then the melody, which is the nine of this chord, okay, so it's pretty, pretty rich, okay, and then what I did afterwards, I played this same shape, I just lifted up an octave and it just creates a little bit of motion a little bit of um, I guess for lack of better terms a little bit of um, we're just kind of adding some trouble into the arrangement here so here's what we have so far so so I play the melody and then the chord right after that okay Melody again, this time I have it an octave, okay? And the reason why I'm choosing an octave here as opposed to a single note, and I could, I could have done a single note, but I'm choosing the octave here because it just sort of brightens up the arrangement, okay? So, because these are some really thick chords that happen later, and I just feel like the octave is, it's really easy to hear the melody at that point, so. Now this chord, Okay, is F7, all right, with, so we have F, E flat, root and seventh, A, which is your third, D, which is your 13, and G, which is your nine. And what I'm doing, I'm essentially going chromatically down. This is my target point, this E flat seven here. 
um, and that's really where I'm meant to go because that's the original chord that's happening in the tune there. And I'm just sort of coming chromatically down into it. And I, I did do a couple other moves which I'll show you here. Okay, so we have the F7, like I said. Then here, what I have is I have an E7 altered. Okay, I still have this G melody notes. So we have in the left hand, E, which is the root of the chord. Right hand, G sharp, which is the third. C, which is my flat 13. D, which is my flat seven, and G, which is my sharp nine, okay? So um, if you guys wanna kinda of take a look at this here for a second, let's just take a look at the E major scale as a reference. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here's sharp nine, because it's just a half step higher than that. There's my third, okay? Fourth, fifth, all right? Uh, then, it, well, I said fourth, really this is the 11th, and then the fifth, and then flat 13, which is a half step lower than our normal 13. Okay, so that's how I got these from, okay? And this D here is, you know, here's the normal major seventh. That's the flat seven you'd hear on dominant chord, so. Okay, so here, I've got an E flat seven chord. Okay, so I have the root, my left hand on E flat, third, 13, which is the C, D flat, which is my flat seven, it's the seventh of this chord, melody, which is the third there. So I'm kind of doubling this melody. So we're going. All right, now that move right there, um, I'm using, I'm really not adding anything much in the left hand, I'm just adding an octave here. Okay, of that E flat, so it really doesn't change the chord. But here, by me bringing this C down to this, we now go from like an E flat seven chord with a 13 down to an E flat seven flat 13. Okay, so I'll play it again. And it really pulls the arrangement forward. This chord definitely needs to be resolved. All right, so here what I have is I have an A flat major seven chord, which is the normal chord that's happening in the tune. Here are the extensions of the chords I'm adding in. So on the downbeat here, I have A flat and G, my left hand, third, 13, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. We're just playing the 13 down here. Okay, so seventh again, okay, which is the melody, and then I go into the third, which is the melody. Now, you may have seen I did a little chromatic motion in my left hand. I went. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm going down from um, the seventh down to the sixth. Okay, if you wanna call it the 13th, it's the same note. Chromatically down from the sixth or the 13th, down into the sharp five or the flat six or the flat 13 into the fifth. So it's just a little motion there. You could easily do it without it, but I think it sounds pretty cool. Just a little, you know, inner voice type motion. Um, you know, I've listened to a lot of Bill Evans over the years, so I think, uh, you know, his, this type of inner voice thing is definitely gonna come out in my playing. So now it can come out in your playing too. Okay, now again, an octave on the melody to really make sure that it sings and to add a little more trouble in the mix. Now here, okay, pretty menacing sounding chord. We have the D7 chord, so D in my left hand with a, with a sharp nine, okay? So we have root, third, flat seven, which is my C, and then sharp nine, which is my F, okay? So if you were thinking of this in minor, this would be the third of the chord, okay? But we're over a dominant chord, so we gotta call this the nine, this is the sharp nine. So. Right? Okay, so now here what I'm doing is, okay, so I'm going from that D7 sharp nine down into a D flat seven 
with a sharp 11. Okay, so we have D flat in my left hand here. Okay, I have the third of the chord, which is F. Here's my sharp 11, okay, because the normal 11 is this note, but we're using sharp 11 on this. Definitely much more of an interesting sound, more of a color there. Okay, so, okay, so there's the sharp 11, which is G, B, which is the flat seven, and F is my melody, okay? So I'm kind of doubling the melody again. So. Okay, now what I have here is I have a D7 sharp nine chord again, but I'm playing it different now. Instead of like this before, essentially what I'm doing is I'm just bringing this note up an octave, but I'm also sort of dividing it now between hands. So we have root, third, D and F sharp, C, which is my flat seven, and then sharp nine. Okay, so we had. So that D7 sharp nine. Now I've got E7 sharp nine, okay? E, G sharp, so root and third. Flat seven, which is your D, okay? Sharp nine, which is G, okay? So there's my normal nine, which is F sharp, and I'm bringing it up a half step, okay? So guys, just as a quick reminder, the nine is the second scale degree from your major scale. So you can always just think, okay, well, what's the two? And then if you wanna find a sharp nine, just go up a half step. So we have. Okay, so G, G and then G sharp, okay. All right, so that's the melody there. So from G to G sharp. Okay, now here. Okay, so I have an E flat major chord now, okay? So I have E flat, B flat. These are my fifths, okay? So I have root and fifth here. Third, all right? Thirteen or sixth, okay, which is C, all right? And then I'm doubling the melody up top again, okay? So, so it can make it sing, all right? So we have the third. Okay, now sometimes I'll even throw the seventh of this chord in there also. Okay, so. Hear that? So I threw it in with the seventh. So it just sweetens it up a little bit. You know, you don't need it. You could do it without it. So. Okay, now here, I have a very similar chord that I had here, but we're down a whole step. So this was an E flat six chord essentially. Okay. And this is a D flat six. We have D flat, A flat, which is root and fifth, third, sixth, okay? And then the third, which is the melody. Now, some of you guys might be thinking at this point, Steve, why did you call this the sixth as opposed to the 13? And the answer to that question would be, there's no seventh technically in the chord, so if I wanted to be very specific, I would call this the sixth, okay? So, but really it doesn't matter, you can call it, um, you can call it mashed potatoes, just as long as you're playing the right chords. It really doesn't matter that much. So that's where we left off. And then I resolved down into the C major seven. And that's pretty much the chord that happens in the tune. So I just called this a C major seven. I could easily have gone, okay, but instead I played the six again because I wanted to keep the same structure of voicing the whole time. And that's a technique that's actually called constant structure. And we're gonna talk about that quite a bit more in future lessons. So, hope you guys had fun with this. I'm gonna play it one more time so you hear how it sounds. Um, I'm gonna put a chord chart on the site. If you guys like this type of lesson, I'm gonna be adding all kinds of tunes and extra material to the uh, premium component of the site. So definitely make sure you stop by. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you at freejazzlessons.com. Thanks guys.